So the trend of university professors that mock Christianity and try and tear it down in the eyes of their students, uh, trying to instill in them a disregard or a even a disdain for Christian values and Christian beliefs, that continues. We see that in an article that just came out from Campus Reform regarding a bulletin board that was placed in Indiana University, Purdue University, Indianapolis, where a professor, Charmaine Champion Shaw, placed this bulletin board out here in plain sight for the students to peruse. Champion Shaw is a Native American and Indigenous Studies professor there at the university. This bulletin board was up from October October through the end of 2023 school year, and it speaks about Christian privilege and how we're privileged as Christians in this country, and it says this, Christian privilege is the idea that Christians receive inherent advantages in society, in school, in the workplace, and in public places due to the perception that Christianity is status quo while other religions are not. As a result, other religions or attitudes about religion are marginalized, overlooked, or ignored altogether, or even perceived as troubling, problematic, or suspicious, the display stated. Let me make one thing very clear as we continue this discussion, that this instructor, this professor, Champion Shaw, is actually lumping all the so-called Christian religions all into one. That would include things like Roman Catholicism, Mormonism, Jehovah's Witnesses, many other groups, as well as mainstream Christianity, uh, such as the Lutheran Church, Presbyterians, all this. Uh, it is not talking about strictly biblical Christianity, not Bible-believing Christians, born-again believers, that have uh, actually taken the word of God and used this as their sole source of doctrine and faith and practice. We're not talking about that. We're talking about all of so-called Christianity. And so, including all that, some of their concerns that she raises may actually be true, but they're not true necessarily of Bible-believing Christians. Back to the article, though. Champion Shaw points out that Christian privilege is where you have benefits that apply to one group of people, the Christians, that other groups don't receive. In other words, the, the Muslims, the Buddhists, the atheists, the pagans, all these, that, that they, they're marginalized in society. So what kind of privileges are, is she talking about here? Well, let's take a look. She has posted up here a checklist for seeing if you actually have Christian privilege or if you actually are one of those persecutors that believe in this. And, and so you can look through this list here and you'll see, uh, you can expect to have time off to celebrate religious holidays. In other words, Christmas and Easter, which I don't know too many companies that actually give off for Easter. Christmas, most companies do give off for Christmas, but that's because it's become an American holiday, not so much a religious holiday. Many non-religious people celebrate Christmas. In fact, many non-Christians actually enjoy some of the celebrations around Christmas, but because we're Christian, we're privileged to have that. Music and television programs pertaining to your religious holidays are readily accessible. So you get Christmas specials on TV. Isn't that wonderful? This is somehow persecuting other religions. I'm not exactly seeing that, but anyway, all right, we'll say that yes, that, that is true. You, you do have Christmas specials. Very few of them, if any of them, portray biblical Christianity. In fact, that's one of the things down here that she puts on the list. It is easy for you to find your faith accurately depicted in television, movies, books, and other media. Now, that might be true if you're Roman Catholic or Lutheran, but in terms of Bible-believing Christianity, in order to find something in line with what the Bible teaches, you're going to have to go outside the mainstream media. And you can go through and you can look at this list of all the different Christian privileges that you have in this country and, and how awful it is and how it persecutes groups like the Jews and Muslims and Buddhists and atheists and pagans. This professor mocks the idea that there is any kind of persecution that ever happens against Christians, at least not in America. And yet today, there is almost nothing sacred in the church. People break in and steal things from the church. They're vandalized and graffiti is placed on the doors. There have been several instances of violence against Christians, either in churches or in Christian schools, where someone has gone in to get their revenge on these Christians, shot the place up, killed people. We find several examples of this in recent history. The display also linked Christian privilege to other groups that she believed were, were privileged. These included white people, able-bodied people, heterosexuals, males, middle or owning class people, middle-aged people, 
and English-speaking people. So all of these groups, they all have this privilege and put down people of other views and other situations. In other words, we need to level the ground between white people and all the other ethnic groups, or able-bodied people and those who maybe are in a wheelchair or something like that. If you're part of the middle class or owning class, as in if you own your own home, then obviously you're privileged and you need to take care of the less fortunate people. Oh, and don't ever be middle-aged, because that's certainly a privilege as well. Professor Champion Shaw also mentioned an event that occurred in her own life when she was in ninth grade in public schools. A Christian group was allowed to operate in the school during lunchtime, which she describes as the weaponizing of Christianity. And when she was invited to that, the person who was leading the group had the audacity to say that Christ was the only way to heaven and that believers in Christ need to be out there telling others about Jesus Christ so that they can go to heaven as well. The Lord Jesus himself in John 14, 6 said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Jesus is the only way to heaven. In Acts 4.12, it says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Again, Jesus Christ is the way of salvation. John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, it says over in Acts 16.31. The Bible is very clear on that. Here's another part of the bulletin board that you're going to love. Christian privilege is directly connected to white supremacy and settler colonialism. Remember Manifest Destiny? In other words, America was destined to reach the West Coast, and white settlers are going to go across the country and take over the entire continent of America. It was an actual doctrine back in the 1800s. But is that truly Christian? That's the question. But it goes on, it says, The whole idea that drove white people's racist and genocidal entitlement to take over North America for their own, it was the idea that the Christian God had destined white settlers to spread ever west, civilizing the indigenous tribes with Christian doctrine and capitalism. This wasn't the first time Christianity and Christian privilege had been tied to the projects of white supremacy and other colonialism, Christian entitlement to land, resources, and annihilating the existing belief systems of indigenous populations has been central to their expansion throughout history. But Christianity has been especially foundational in the context of colonialism. If murdering people and forcing them to commit to your religion while you take over their lands and try your hardest to stamp out their culture isn't the apex of privilege, I don't know what else is. Well, that would probably be true if that were true of biblical Christianity. Unfortunately, she is mistaken and that's not true at all. The idea that contemporary Christianity of that day was behind Manifest Destiny, yeah, that's probably true, but it is contrary to this book. It is contrary to the Bible. The idea of going through and destroying civilizations and wiping them out and taking them over and forcing them to convert absolutely is foreign to the Bible. The idea with mission work is to convert people through the truth of Christianity, not by forcing anyone to do anything. That is something that was done throughout the ages in the state churches over in Europe and the various uh, groups that were institutionalized Christianity, not biblical Christianity. By creating this bulletin board, Professor Champion Shaw has encouraged the narrative that Christianity is somehow destroying America and taking away the rights of others and persecuting people, and uh, which is far from the truth. Of course, by her definition, if I come and knock on her door and try and give her a gospel tract or tell her about Jesus Christ, that would be weaponizing Christianity and persecuting her. Bible-believing Christianity has both been persecuted by pagans and by state churches down through history. We see that in the Donatists, the Waldenses, the Albigenses, the Anabaptists, and the persecution of Baptists and other nonconformists in colonial America. Now, she denies that Christians are anywhere in America experiencing persecution, which also is not true. Though for the most part, persecution in America is on a very mild scale. The narrative in America is rapidly becoming more hostile towards Bible-believing Christianity. And all of this is a prelude for what's going to come in the tribulation period. America is becoming darker and more wicked each and every day. And we just need to continue to be faithful to Christ in these dark times, no matter what the cost. I don't condone persecution or discrimination against any religious group. 
but I expect the same in return, and that means my opportunity to share my faith with others. In Mark 16.15, our Lord commanded us, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. We have a responsibility to take this gospel message to this lost and dying world, whether they want to hear it or not. The days may come where they restrict us by law and by other means, but we have a responsibility to this world to tell them about Jesus Christ. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Acts 16.31 For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Romans 10.13 Thank you.